We're restoring and repairing this Amiga 500. Last time we took it apart and we discovered that this RAM board had a leaking battery on it and it had leaked over this board and also over part of the main board. We also discovered that this capacitor had exploded and that was sitting right here. Today we're going to take the machine outside and clean it and then we're going to bring it back and recap it and um, possibly there will be a little bonus something extra at the end so stay tuned and watch to the end for that. Right okay let's do it. Just work through these pieces one at a time. This will still need a good cleaning, but at least it will be less dirty. keyboard is really disgusting. These keys will have to come off. I really don't want to be blowing this dust and grot about inside the house. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's better than it was. Okay, a few little bits of rust, but that doesn't look too bad. Okay. Some of this is just dust bunnies, but some of it also is the dead capacitor. Okay, carrying on. Let's see if this will come off. To there, so it should. Ah, it's clipped in. This is the awful thing. We're going to cut this battery off because there's nothing we can do for it. I think 
to do with this, because it's battery acid, is vinegar. Okay. So we're just going to sluice it with vinegar. leave that to soak for a while. Now I'm also going to sluice this side of the board. because the corrosion has spread to some extent and I think that connector is going to have to come off but that should at least neutralize the acid we're going to leave that for 10 or 15 minutes right that's been in there for a while and you can see the water it's gone quite green water vinegar and a lot of that um, corrosion has actually come off. I've given it a brush a few times. So that's looking actually a lot better. And the same thing on here. That's not as anything like as green as it was. Okay. So I've rinsed it under the tap. And now we're going to put some IPA on it just to get rid of the water. The idea is the IPA the alcohol drives the water away and the alcohol evaporates a lot quicker than the water does. So we can just put it on some blue paper. Okay, and that's going to dry on some more blue paper. And we'll leave that until tomorrow. Okay, so the board is now dried and cleaned and the subboard is dried and cleaned as much as it can be but we're not going to worry too much about this because I don't think it will work and to be honest uh, it's probably easier to replace it than it is to try and repair it but maybe we'll do that as another project. I don't know if you saw this before, but this oops, see if you can zoom in on it is what is left of the original capacitor that blew, and that was rattling around loose in the box. And this, of course, is the remains of the actual metal um, foil that was on the capacitor or that was in the capacitor. That's an interesting souvenir. Okay, so the board is clean and although that's the only capacitor that blew, I'm going to replace all these capacitors because, well, they say that the A500 doesn't need capacitors replacing, unlike the later models, but it's better to be safe than sorry, I think. And it's no um, hardship really to do it. Okay, so I've got a big bag of capacitors from RS and I've got my list of uh, parts so that we can go through and replace them. Now, some of these Amigas have got a website called Amiga Finder and they will tell you where any part is on the board, but that really applies to the A1200 and the A600 and the A3000 and 2000 even, but not sadly to the A500. So we're gonna to have to go through and do it by hand, which is why I have this piece of paper with the labels written down and the values, and we can go through and tick them off as we go through it now. There are far more capacitors in this bag than we actually need 
for this board because I bought some spares and I figured that if I've got one A500 I'll end up with another one and there are always useful things to do with capacitors and I don't include sticking them across the mains and watching them go bang I have never done that honest so these are Panasonics 3300 microfarads we need two of those And these are the infamous 47 microfarads. Okay. These ones can go back in the bag. I need to invest in some sort of little storage system, drawers or something. If you have um, a suggestion for the best sort of kind of little drawers to get, then... Um, please mention it in the comments. Okay, let's start with 10 microfarads, 50 volts. So, got the bad bad boy out. Just going to show you that. Ugh. start putting new capacitors in so let's start with these two that we've got out of the bag these are 10 microfarads 50 volts C306 and C712 these were the ones over here okay C712 positive that side negative that side
awesome. The board is cleaned and dried and now the next thing that I want to do is replace this header with a new one because even though it's had a good scrub there's still what looks like corrosion behind it. Now the RAM card again I don't know if that's going to be salvageable maybe the RAM itself still works maybe the clock chip I'm guessing that's the clock chip works but the board itself looks very very grotty and very corroded so I think that's probably for the scrap heap but we might be able to repair it we might that's something that I can have a look at another time. But in case I can't, I've got here some PCBs from a well-known Chinese manufactory. That is a RAM card. And basically that will sit here not sure if it's that way up or that way up, one way up. I think it's this way up. With the female version of this on there. I don't need to plug that in because it's the wrong one anyway. But that will go in there and it just needs a memory card, uh, um, sorry, a memory chip, some resistors and capacitors and that's the clock chip if I decide to put one on. That, we dropped it. That would take a uh, CR3032, is it 2032? Whichever um, battery if, if you want to put one on. So I've got five of these. That's a project for another day and another video if I can get hold of the chips and the bits. Right, enough waffle. Let's turn the noisy fanny thing on and get desoldering. Let's put some flux on here. You should be a little bit easier to unsolder than the capacitors because they are not massive ground planes. See if that will come out. Okay, it's finally out, so let's just clean it up. Okay, now we can put the new socket in.
Okay, so the final thing to do with this board before we put it back into its case is to give it a quick test. So the new connector is on and full disclosure, I did make one wee. I did make one cock up, which was this wire here, this uh, pin here was uh, and disconnected on the top of the board, which is a pointy thing, which is this pin, no, this pin here, and that goes to pin seven of this chip here, U34. And well, it didn't, so. I've had to put this little bodge wire on. It's not one of my boards if it doesn't have a bodge wire on it. That's kind of like a Tim was here. Okay, so I've got my power supply, which is a Meanwell RT65B. Uh, it's 3D printed in this glorious golden colour which makes it look just like something that's been really 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 left out in the sun but it's not it's meant to be that colour that is glorious golden yellow okay so plug that in now let's connect the Amiga up Okay, this is where we wait for it to go bang. Three, oh. power to the power supply. Three, two, one. Oh, that's a good start. And the disk drive is ticking. That's always a good sign. Okay, I don't have a workbench disk because this Amiga did not come with a workbench disc. I've got something that I can plug into it and try, which is Flight Simulator 2 from Sublogic. I have no idea if it will boot. Let's try it and see. Now I haven't got a mouse plugged in or a joystick or any sound, so we're not going to get very far, but we may well get to a starting screen. Look at that. And because it's designed for an NTSC Amiga, of course we get a third of the screen missing at the bottom and everything's squashed. This being a PAL Amiga, but what can you do? Okay, with that, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more. Um, next time we will be cleaning the case and the keyboard and gosh, it's, ah, this is demo mode. Okay. Let's just see what it does. It's a Cessna, I believe, 60 knots. It should be rotating. Yep. I have no idea where we are or where we're going. 200 feet, we appear to be leveling off. In fact, we're at down to 50 knots, so yeah.
This is not your Microsoft Flight Simulator of 2022. Okay, we're in San Francisco. I recognize that as being the Golden Gate Bridge, and that is, I believe, Alameda. Famed for Mythbusters, maybe. Anyhow, as we approach the lost city of Alcatraz and fade into the sunset, we'll see you next time. See ya!